Hello everyone, in this video, I would like to use the Siemens i7-1200 TI Portal version 15.1 to set up one sequence control structure. As we know, the sequence control structure can be used for multiple purposes, for example, the valve sequence control or some process flow control, so you can control the equipment or devices step by step. So in this video, I will use this controller, the Siemens SM1212, this controller, and to implement this structure. Okay, firstly, let's go to the program blocks, and I will create one DB, and that DB will store all the tags we will use. Add a new block. I will create one date block, and I will rename that is a 11, date block sequence. SEQ one. So after we implement this DB, if you have a further more sequence, you can create sequence two and twelve, sequence three, thirteen. You can copy and paste. Okay, click OK. Okay, inside this DB, I will create couple tags here. Firstly, I will create couple bool here. So sequence start. Sequence complete. And uh, and the sequence number. This is a step number, that is one integer number or unsigned integer. And next I will declare a couple array. So firstly that is a sequence condition. Okay. That is an array. So I will create 0 to 127. Totally 128 bulls here. This length, so the more it will take more rooms, it totally depends on the actual application. Okay. And next, sequence. Step. Same thing, array by bool. And next, that is a sequence step timer. So this timer will be used to put a interval timer between step to next step. So array, we will put a TON here. Okay, TON time. So if we spend that is the timer. So we basically finish the sequence tags declaration. And then let's create one FC. So I will temporarily put all the codes and all the program within this FC. So I will name it 11. And this is the block sequence one. Okay. Firstly, I will go to the OB1 code this FC. Okay. And then go back to this FC program the detail. Okay, so to program this sequence control, I will use the letter logic to program that. So first step, I will use a compare. So compare, and I will use our step number. So let's double click this DB1. I will click this button, flow it, so I can drag the tag between the DB to this uh, letter logic here. So I will use this uh, step number. So first step, that is a uh, step zero. And when this step equal to zero, it will turn on this step number. So sequence step. So this step will turn on, okay? And then this is a uh, initial start here and I will put a logic this is the tag so the sequence start will initiate our sequence start so the first step and here we would need a couple conditions here and this is the first step we initiate the sequence start so the first step I will use the step one and we will use the move use the move 
operations. And we will move this step number to number one. So So number one, write into this integer number, sequence number, drag to here. Okay. The next step, that is a step one. So the similar structure. So firstly, we will use the compare. So when this step number equal to one, and firstly, I will put a similar logic at here. So we will fire this sequence step, step one, turn it on. Okay, and then put a parallel here and put the condition here. So this will be the couple conditions here to control our sequence conditions here. So because this is step one, I will use this uh, step one here. Okay, I will drag this uh, step sequence one and once this is sequence one turn on so use a similar logic once this is sequence condition turn on i will put a timer here use the timer let's go to find out the right side this instructions and find the timer i find this uh, ton timer okay and once you drag this timer, it will ask you if we need this uh, timer, instant DB here, because I already pre-declared that timer. So we will click this uh, cancel. We will drag that declared timer directly. Our timer is here, sequence type timer. So because this is the first step, I will use this uh, index one. So drag this timer to here. This is the instant DB of this timer. Okay, I will drag this timer to here. Okay. And this timer that will control from this step move to the next step. I will prefer put a two seconds here. For testing wheel, we will see from step to next step, it will take a two seconds. So it will leave a time to us to monitor the step. Okay. So the queue, it will, once this timer expire, so we will move to the next step. So I will put a move command, move command. So it will move the next step. So the target will be this step number, paste here. And the next step, we could define the number two, or most of the cases, I will prefer use a five as a step number, as an interval step between the step to the next step. For example, next step is a number five. And after that, it will 10, 15, 20, 25, 13. So uh, by default, we will leave uh, four steps between the step and next step. So in future, in case you use this uh, structure for your actual application, or if you already use this structure program one sequence control, and one day if customer asks you to add some additional steps, so you have a spare or additional step number in the between. So you can add some additional steps between the one step and to a next step. For here, I will prefer use the step five. Move to the step five. So next step structure will be the similar at here. So I will copy this step and the paste. And this step will be the number five. And this is equal to five because it will move the number five here and move to this step. And this step we will fire the index five. And this is the condition control this sequence conditions. So it will be the number five. And this is the number five. All others are number five index. And after this number five step, we will move to step 10. Okay, this will be the conditions to control. We move to the next step. So if there's no other conditions to control this step, you can delete it. That means once the step arrives this step, it will directly turn it on, and after two seconds, it will move to the next step. If there's no other conditions, and uh, you do not need any interval time, so you can set a zero as this timer. 
So this code will be left here as a spare code and keep this structure as the same structure as other structures. So it will be used for future uh, additional program or additional logic. This is step five. The similar structure, we could copy and paste program the step 10. And this is step 10. And sequence step 10. Conditions step 10. 10. And after the step 10, we will move to 15. 5 will be used as a step. Okay, and then we will move to step 15. So copy this step 10, move to step 15. So after the step 15, we will move to 20. So you can imagine that's why I create this timer step and conditions uh, that is an array. So using this way, the key variable, the name, they are the similar, and we only need to change the index number. So next step is the step 20. Okay, so after the 20 arrive here, so we'll assume the 20 is the last step. So at the last step, this is the condition we can control. This is the last step. And once we arrive, this is the last step, we can move to the step zero. So once we move to the step zero, basically it go to the top, this logic here. And once we receive this step zero at here, so we could also program, so this is step zero. And once we get the step zero, it's waiting for the new sequence start command, and then it will move to the step one. So restart this sequence control. So at the end here, once this sequence arrives is a step 20, so once this condition turns on, so we will move to the step zero. Other things, I will create one timeout. For example, by some conditions, if our step number stuck somewhere and uh, if this uh, step is not equal to zero, for example, after 100 seconds or two minutes, so we will reinitial this uh, step number to prevent the sequence stuck there forever. So we could put a logic sequence timeout. So to program this timeout, I will use not equal to zero. So compare and use this step number. If this step number is not equal to zero, that means the sequence is running in the middle somewhere. And I will put a timer here. I will copy this timer. So I will put a timer here, put a timer, TON, click this uh, cancel, I will use the uh, I will use this uh, index zero timer. Okay, drag to here. I will put a timer, for example, t palm 100 seconds, t palm 120 seconds here. So that means if the sequence is stuck somewhere and after 120 seconds stuck there, it will recover itself. So once this uh, timer expire, we can set a zero to this uh, sequence number. So I can copy the same thing, move zero to this sequence number. Or we can also add a conditions here. For example, if uh, we got an error here and the uh, sequence stuck somewhere, so we can restart, we can reset this uh, sequence control. Most of the cases we will use uh, the cell has a fault signal at here. So from test view, because this is a basic structure, I will delete these uh, conditions. So, and you can add uh, other conditions when you use this uh, sequence structure for the actual cases. Okay, so now we basically finish all the essential conditions. And so I can delete these conditions here. And this is the sequence start. So 
in actual cases here also can be added like a um, cell no fault or part present here. So allow this a sequence start. And one essential bit we need to add is this sequence complete. So at the beginning, the sequence complete is off. So it allows us to go start. Okay, I will delete this. And at the end of the sequence, we will set this a sequence complete signal. Okay, at this step, we will set this sequence complete. So at here, after the timer, I will set this sequence complete. Sequence complete. Okay. And when we need to turn off this sequence complete, most of the cases we will use the part present gone or some other conditions. So uh, here I will use the part present. So I will add a line here sequence reset. Reset sequence complete. Reset sequence complete. Okay, so here we will reset the sequence complete. And the condition is the part present signal. So we will temporarily use 1M condition. For example, I'm 20.0. We will rename this tag. So that is a part present. So if the part present is gone, that means we remove the part. So the sequence will start from the beginning. This part present can be also used at the beginning of the sequence start. So at here, we can also add here. That means at the beginning, so firstly, this sequence should be at a zero, waiting for our new initiate, step equal to zero, waiting for the part present. And once the part present, once this sequence start turn on, it will move this step number to number one. And then this whole sequence will start. And in most of the cases, this sequence start will be connect to the pump button or the initiate button or start button from your cell or from your machine. Okay, so now we can download the program. Save the project and compile and download. Okay, click this monitor. Now by default, this sequence is at a zero. So meantime, we can also click this close all network. This is the entire structure in this uh, sequence structure program. And we can also click this uh, open all network. So with this uh, comment, it's easy for you to jump to somewhere. So you can open one of them and look at the current logic at here. It's very convenient. Okay, now it's waiting for this part present. I will assume we put a part here. We can click this tag and right click modify to one. It's waiting for our pump button or start button. And now if I start this tag, so we will see now it's at one. After two seconds, it's reached to five. Now it's 10, 15, 20. Now it's go to zero. So again, the sequence complete now. So I will turn off this part present, demonstrate we remove the part. And now the sequence complete recover to zero. Now it's waiting for our new cycle start. So I will turn off this cycle start. Oh, probably this two seconds is too fast for you. So I will temporarily change this two seconds to 10 seconds. So there will be enough time for us to monitor the step. And when I download the program, it won't restart the controller. It will download the program change only. That is a very convenient function. So that allows us to offline change the program and download only and change only download when we download the controller. Okay, we put uh, 10 seconds here. And now 
if I click this uh, download, it will only download this uh, function block and the controller will not restart. Okay, click this monitor. And I will turn on this uh, part present. Now it's waiting for this uh, sequence start. So I will turn on this uh, sequence start. So this time we will see. Now this timer is running. And after this 10 seconds gone, it's rule number five. Actually, we should put uh, conditions here. For example, the WAF turn on uh, part present something to control these conditions. Because this is a, a basic structure, so I leave uh, zero conditions here. So in actual case, we should put a condition at here. Now it's moved to 15. And you will see once this uh, timer expire, it will move to 20. And once it's got 20, if we have some condition, it's waiting for the condition. Now it takes 10 seconds. And once 10 seconds expire, it moves to zero. And meantime, this sequence complete turn on. Because this sequence complete turn on, a prevent, a prevent we start over and over, right? So, but in actual case, this sequence start should be a momentary button, or pump button, or just a click button. It will not turn on always. But even if this is a, a momentary button, we better still put a sequence complete signal to prevent it to start over and over again. So this sequence is complete. This sequence complete go off could be controlled by a part present or other conditions. This is the entire structure. As we can see, I leave a five as an interval steps. So it leave a room in case we need to add a other steps number in the middle. Also, I put a sequence timeout. So in case by some reason, this sequence number stuck somewhere is not equal to zero. And after 120 seconds, so it will force this sequence go back to zero. So most of the cases, we will put a, a fault condition at here. That means if the sequence stuck somewhere and uh, the cell got a fault, so it will reset itself, recover the sequence by itself. All right, that is the sequence control. And in next video, so in another video, I will demonstrate how can we use this uh, sequence structure implement the camera trigger control. That is uh, the key's IV2 trigger and the result register. So I will use this uh, sequence structure as our base and implement the actual application. See you in next video. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.